7C, and this is REZ 2024-08. It's uh, River Road. It is located at 4374 River Road. This involves 15 acres. It's currently R21, and the request is for a PD, and it will be served by county utilities. Mr. Dillon. Yes, sir. Again, this is a request on the same piece of property that you heard a couple years ago that requested R21 to RA. That was denied 3 2 it by the commission at that time, but now they've come back with a different applicant to do plan development, which you'll see here in just a moment. Um, you notice the surrounding pattern of R21, R1, and R10 to the south, again, following county utilities. It is a suburban character area, and you notice that the only wetlands are here on the southern portion of the property, as the property does tend to drop off rather significantly from the road to the rear of the property, approximately 37 feet over the entire distance. What you see here are the two existing homes and the proposed driveway that would be splitting these homes with their new site plan. And then again, here's the overall site plan in its entirety, which I'll go into in a little more detail in the next few slides. You notice the entrance here, having a single point of ingress and egress. One of the conditions that I'll bring up in a moment is lot one. You notice that that is an exterior lot and therefore should have 30 foot perimeter setbacks all the way around. The northern lot line you see is not exactly 30 feet, and this was noted to the applicant. Uh, no changes have been made since, so one of the conditions is to address uh, lot one there. As we move into the neighborhood, you'll notice that these are approximately 5,000 square foot lots, 30 foot building setbacks along the perimeter, proposing a 20 foot building rear setback on the interior, and then a mixture of uh, only six foot side setbacks for the majority of these lots. Staff is also, also recommending eight foot side setbacks that the applicant has shown six foot here on the site plan. Some of the other conditions were, uh, regarding buffering and landscaping, including this green space. There's also some considerations for additional off street parking because of the single point of ingress and egress. It's not shown here, but staff didn't want to bring it up for consideration. Again, moving to the rear of the property, they're using this. This is approximately four acres to remain in a stormwater contention area. This is the overall site from an aerial view of its adjacent neighbors. We're gonna pull back a little bit farther just for the surrounding area. Just to kind of give you an idea that this is the first very urban dense uh, proposal in this area. You notice the existing land use pattern is relatively low density. However, county utilities are available on River Road and the applicant is proposing to run an E1 sewer system from the southeast corner along uh, Cat Creek there. So again, you can kind of see just in general the proximity of this proposal. This type, this size proposal has been done throughout the county and is noted in your packets the years that these other properties were rezoned. You'll note the additional setbacks in there as well. So we do see a mixture of six foot, eight foot uh, alternative because they're all done in PD. Again, I direct you to note seven here. This is the applicant's proposed setback. And then here, mainly the bottom notes regarding homes, parking, and green spaces. You see the lot size, the proposed home size, average lot width. And again, this is all on the site plan that would be binding if approved. So these are the considerations that the TRC had. You know, the top half there, again, the duplexes, recommended eight yard side foot setbacks, something about the lots, particularly the driveway access to minimize or uh, to maximize the amount of uh, open road space for fire rescue. Condition number four talks about fences being between the houses. Number five limits accessory structures based on the size of the lots. Lot condition, or condition number six that the TRC recommends is for landscaping. It doesn't include a fence at this time, but it could. And then lot, uh, condition number seven is the no on-street parking. Generally, the Planning Commission followed these recommendations except for condition number two, in which they shrunk to six feet, which is shown on the site plan. And then they clarified point number four, saying that fences are allowed, but they can only begin at the end of the build, at the rear uh, side of the building, rear corner there. Again, these are just some of the other considerations that the TRC had for this general area. There is a discrepancy, like I said, between the front yard setbacks that shown on the site plan with the 45 foot and the staff's 35 foot. We talked about some of the surrounding properties, the potential to stub out 
connections for future development. You know, number six there, the parking to try to remove anything from the streets. With all that being said, that again, this is the overall site plan for approximately 54 residential lots. And Planning Commission did recommend approval number two with the modified conditions seven to one. Is there any questions for Mr. Taylor? Yeah, did you happen to know what the, uh, in one of those slides you were, you referenced Barrington and Cove Tree, some of those other developments in the county. Um, do you happen to know what the size of our setbacks are on those? Uh, yes, sir. Barrington, five foot side yard setbacks. Glen Laurel, six foot. Nelson Hill, five foot. North Lake Subdivision has between six and eight. And Hamilton Point has six foot. Do we have any history of any issues with six foot side yard setback? I'm, I'm assuming that's got something to do with fire. That was a concern from fire rescue. I don't know if any particular case has come up. Uh, but that was noted that it's very difficult to fight fires in five feet of space, especially when you start adding HVAC units, trash cans, even ones, things like that. Did they, didn't the developers address the HVAC units? They did note that they would be they would uh, consider putting all HVAC units in the rear of the house to again try to make more space. The E1 systems, uh, that's a design consideration that utilities may or may not be able to accommodate. That'd be a question for them, but they were willing to relocate some of those things to the rear to allow greater separation between houses. But we don't have any history that we're aware of issues with six foot side yard setback. Not that we're brought during the fire. There's not been an incident that we know of where houses have burnt down because there was only 12 feet between the houses. If, if I could, um, Mr. Chairman, sure. Commissioner Ornstein, we have we had this this discussion at length with with fire, and Chief Young can certainly speak up. In the past, whenever we've had these, and thankfully we don't have too many just full blown structure fires, um, but the conversation here was, and what we had to do in some other areas is <clears throat> you're just trying to protect the houses on either side and get the one in the middle out as quickly as possible. But whenever they're that close together it's very hard to just fight one fire. You're having to, to cool the others, especially when there's vinyl siding. We've had some issues where um, we were keeping the houses on either side cool and the siding was still melting off while the one in, in the middle burned. So, so we have had issues of six foot setbacks sometimes. Yes, yes, and that, that's gonna be an issue if, if any of these homes ever catch on fire that are built this close together, regardless of where they're built, you're going to be protecting the ones that left in the world. Well, that's what, that's what I'm trying to get to. I mean, are we split hairs? Do we just come up with, okay, we'll settle for eight foot, we'll meet you in the middle, we'll split the difference, we'll whatever. But at the end of the day, does two foot really matter? Does five foot really matter? I and mean, what is, you know, what is the state fire marshal or the NFPA, whatever code? I mean, what do they recommend? Because personally, I don't see a whole lot of difference. I mean, unless you're trying to, drive a truck between them or you know there's some reason for equipment or whatever I mean I just want to understand what and why that really matters well I, I, I think just trying to look at it from the big picture and look at it from a logical standpoint uh, we've got to make a determination about what we're going to allow on that setback because our issue as much as anything is um, we still have a variance process that allows folks to come in and actually even shrink that even more. The codes take care of it once the house reaches a certain distance from the adjacent house that the contractor has to do a certain amount of things from a code standpoint or fire rating of those structures, which gets pretty expensive itself. So it's to their benefit as much as anything that we maintain a separation and as much as anything from a safety standpoint. Um, I'm not going to just pick on this particular project, but it, it, it brought up some safety issues when you begin to get a little more congested and, and decrease the lot sizes, but yet want to put as much house as you can possibly put on a smaller footprint. That begins to get these setback issues to become potentially a big issue. I mean, I, I've seen some of them from 
my involvement in the industry, you put a, you put an HVAC system, you put trash cans, somebody puts a fence down through the middle of it because that's what they want, that separation. There's, it, it's almost impossible to even walk through it. You can't get through it. So if, if we have to fight that fire and get in that space, it's a pretty dangerous place to put our firefighters at the same time. Well, I'm, all the the of the logic. I'm just saying, show me where there's been issues before. If we got developments that's got six foot side yard setbacks in at least three or four locations and they've not been a problem, then it sounds to me like we as government are trying to protect somebody who don't really need the government protection. I mean, to me, I see this as somewhat a little bit of overreach if we're saying we've done it before, we have no history of issues with it, but yet now we're saying it is an issue and I just, unless you can show me where there's been issues in the past, then I don't have an issue. I mean, that's just, again, I'm, this is my opinion, but I want facts and, and proof that there's an issue or let's not make an issue out of it. He's right. Let's don't wait for an issue to occur. Why don't we increase these lot sizes to 8,000 square feet to give us more room to work this out? Well, that's where the problem comes in. And yeah, that's the well, additional as I said earlier. The development community is going to create a smaller lot that put as large a house as they possibly can. And that's what creates the issues he's talking about. Yeah, but if you had even increasing the lot sizes, if you're still going to allow them to to have a smaller separation uh, to uh, on the setbacks, it doesn't matter. We're still creating the same problem. They'll allow it. Well, in fact, that's what I'm getting to, and that's kind of where we're headed with all of this. As much as anything, there's several things that we need to look at to prevent a lot of these things that's causing even smaller and smaller. Um, setbacks. So. Well, my question was, did any of the neighbors uh, show any objection to it? No one spoke in opposition. I did receive a phone call from the uh, neighbor to the east. Uh, he's a resident out there. He has concern of children trespassing and accessing his pond to fish in. That was brought up. Uh, that's kind of sparked the discussion regarding a fence being installed at the time of development. Currently, staff is recommending a condition of just landscaping, uh, but a privacy fence could be added as part of those conditions. That was the only neighbor who called it in opposition and spoke. He also attended the meeting, but he did not speak at the meeting. Any other questions? I'm not able to see those uh, plaques and and so forth, for no, no. nobody, even the skip bridge when I that really didn't get to see it, I was really hoping to get to see it. Uh, on your tablet? On okay. tablet, it's not coming we'll up. We'll address that. Yeah, they just have a problem with it, so they'll get fixed. Okay. okay. We'll try to see if we can get that information up. Any other questions? <laughs>